volunteers visit Shiku Village, where cafeteria reopens to feed the elderly. China's ban on accepting foreign waste leads to lower prices for importing reuse materials. I'm Sean Scanlon. This is Dai Headlines. Let's get started. Beijing Zinji volunteers went to Xigu Village, where a cafeteria was open to subsidize the cost of meals for the elderly. However, due to the epidemic, the cafeteria was closed for more than half a year. Recently, the service resumed to the delight of elders. Here's more. It's already fall in North China. The weather becomes cooler. Beijing Chizu volunteers carry out autumn home visits in advance. They went to Sugo village in Suzhazhuang. When Grandma Hao heard the familiar voice, she hurried out to greet the volunteers. Grandma Hao, whose children almost all work in South China, cherished the pictures of her children traveling together very much. She shared them with the volunteers happily and treated everyone as her own child. She remember everything in our every visit. She could also recognize each of us, right? The 68-year-old Grandma Sanhua is not old and loves to move around. Gigi volunteers encourage her with a sutra. You are 68 years old right now. If you keep 50 years in the bank, then you'll only be 18 years old. Try to think that you are 18 now. Are you happy? <laughs> In the village, almost all young people are working in other places. Since November last year, Gigi volunteers have started to subsidize seniors' meals in the elderly cafeteria. Every time they dine, the elders gather together happily. Everyone gathers to dine, feeling like a big family. If they dine together, she will be happy and has an appetite. Because of the epidemic, the elderly cafeteria was closed for more than half a year and has resumed service recently. And it just happened that volunteers visit, filling the cafeteria with full of laughter. The seniors like you very much. They often mention you in daily life that you are a group of people doing good deeds. I am very grateful to you. Volunteers sent warmth before Mid Autumn Festival, giving the quiet Seagull Village a lively atmosphere and warming everyone's hearts. Trenzhou Zhiji volunteers went to visit disadvantaged families before sending warmth this winter. Visits were made to mentally challenged individuals living in messy homes with the promise to help them clean. All these visits help prepare the way for much needed warmth and love, which will come later. walking down streets and alleys to visit disadvantaged families who may otherwise have trouble taking care of themselves. You have to wash all these dishes. If you don't wash them, you will have stomach after eating the food. Deciding to help this family clean, a visit is made to a roadside store to purchase cleaning supplies. Did you volunteers visited households before sending warmth in the winter? Near this well, all the household items of a resident with mild mental disabilities were washed by hand. They don't know how to wash this. I want to show them so they can do it later. From head to toe, this person is washed and the village cadre also joins in lovingly to help. After he sees what it's like to be very clean, he will know how to wash. I don't find it uncomfortable to do this. What you do for the people in our village is very caring and helpful. It's really impossible to say it in words. There are very few groups helping these disadvantaged people. One by one, visits to each home help assess the financial situation of families and also provide familial love and care. The global pandemic has brought an economic impact to many. Did your foundation promote a project to give financial support to families in need? Volunteers visited schools in Kaohsiung, hoping that through personal visits, scholarships and daily supplies can be distributed allowing pupils to school without worry. 
Jing's aphorisms, along with singing and dancing, is taking place as the Dai mother leads the group, as children are very happy with the activity. Some children have already went through the Jing's aphorism teachings, therefore they adapt to the situations faster. Some are a bit shy at first, but later everyone opens up their hearts. Through the process of caring for children's character development, volunteers have also discovered several pupils right to education, heavily affected by the pandemic. When the economy is bad, it affects the children going to school as is a burden. Due to the pandemic, parents who lost their jobs or received no pay, affecting their children's ability to attend school. Through bullet points, teachers are reminded to find their suitable students. One step at a time, the scholarship support mission was initiated, gathering bureau chiefs, teachers and principals, further seeking for children who really need assistance. When they grow up, they have to expand the love they receive as they remember the hearts of appreciation and give the love back to people around them. Contributing to society starts a good cycle. The long-term visits never stopped because the main purpose is to continue the children's path of education. When Suji sisters visit, they can actually find and help children in need. There are plenty of dark corners of our society needing Suji people's help. The child is the hope for a family's future. Volunteers visited different elementary schools as they let children attend school relief without any worries. In Malaysia, the COVID-19 pandemic has inspired Zhiji's Kuala Lumpur and Selangor chapter to launch a neighborhood relief program. In the first distribution, Zhiji volunteers visited door-to-door -door in order to deliver cash cards for successful applicants, helping them overcome difficulties. Volunteers also encourage people to be a caregiver and donate money to help others. In the first distribution of the Neighborhood Relief Program, volunteers delivered the cash cards to the successful applicants individually. Residents' income was affected by the epidemic. The arrival of the volunteers in blue and white uniforms is his financial burden. His dad was sick and had a stroke, leaving only him to work for the family and income was relatively little. His wife was pregnant and suffered from diabetes. She needs to take insulin injection every day. She is going to give birth in October and hence can work now. When the application went through, I couldn't believe it and so did my husband. It's hard to tell my feeling I'm happy and grateful. The relief program supports people from different ethnicities and colors. Volunteers went to Feng Li Ping's home and found that she was raising two children alone. The epidemic has disrupted her life, and her mother made shoes at home to help the family. Feng Li Ping is a care recipient and also a caregiver. After learning about Gigi's bamboo corn bank, she immediately responded to it to reciprocate Gigi's love. It can help a lot of underprivileged and stateless people. I hope the money I donated in this small bamboo bank can help them. I will introduce it to my friends and neighbors, and hopefully they can keep one in their family. The ripples of kindness spread invisibly, and Chichi volunteers stepped into the dark corners of society, hoping to help the people in need to ease their immediate difficulties. China rejected foreign garbage in 2018, much of it came to Taiwan, leading to major challenges and opportunities for companies involved in reuse materials. Before, the cost of one metric ton of recycled paper in Taiwan was about 160 U.S. dollars, but imported waste paper is only about 60 U.S. dollars. This imbalance has put a strain on those who collect waste paper in Taiwan. In some instances, domestic paper collected through garbage sorting ultimately ends up in local incinerators. The Jilong Customs Warehouse is full of containers from various countries, including domestic reuse materials and foreign waste imported by the recycling industry. 
After China implemented a waste ban in 2018, the reused materials we imported in Taiwan, which were mostly waste paper and plastic, indeed saw a small increase in 2018. This is a waste paper recycling facility in Taipei. Starting in 2018, Taiwan's domestic waste paper recycling prices have begun to fluctuate. <laughs> Taiwan's waste paper recycling price has declined several times after the ban on waste from China. Waste paper recycling plants are worried that this is because of the impact of a large number of overseas reused materials entering Taiwan. It's not as good as before. Yes, this is definitely because of too many imports now. Of course, it's not like before. Imports have had an impact and they demand better quality now. We didn't pick out the lunch boxes before, so now we have to do it. The average price of one kilogram of waste paper in Taiwan is about five to six NT dollars, which is about 160 US dollars per metric ton. The cheapest waste paper in the United States is only more than 50 US dollars per metric ton, including international freight. For this reason, a large amount of European and American waste is entering Taiwan, with a serious impact on domestic waste paper prices. While domestic recycling prices have been affected, domestic companies that utilize reused materials have experienced some unexpected advantages. Once China refused European and American reuse materials, Taiwanese companies had more opportunities to access these materials. In the early days, some of the better quality raw materials might be given priority with export to China. But after mainland China banned the import of these materials, we actually see it as an opportunity for our country. At least in this area, Taiwan, we can import some relatively good quality raw materials, which is a very good chance for Taiwan to improve. The Taiwan Paper Association stated that Taiwan's paper industry has experienced its most prosperous period in a decade after China issued a ban. China is basically the world's largest consumer of waste paper. So in the international market, there will be a lot of waste paper that cannot enter China, which will cause international waste paper prices to fall. So starting from the second half of last year, international prices of waste paper was going down. Domestic paper mills in Taiwan naturally considered their own course and adjust their import volume a little bit upwards. Taiwan's resources are limited and reused materials coming from overseas have a long history, especially waste paper and plastics. Of course, this involves our waste disposal law. When it comes to industrial materials, it is still in fact waste. If the industry especially advises us, we'll allow it to be imported without using other special permits. Regulating the import quality of industrial materials and the qualifications of manufacturers to combat illegality. The EPA announced that there are 15 major items of industrial waste that can be used as industrial materials, including waste wood, waste plastic, waste paper, waste copper, and waste metal. These reused materials imported to Taiwan must be done under the category of industrial waste. They must be imported through the customs broker and must have a qualified manufacturer's certificate. At present, the annual import of plastics is about 400,000 metric tons, and the imported paper and paper materials are about 1.3 million metric tons of reused materials. From January 2018, when China embargoed foreign waste more than 1 million metric tons, or about 40,000 containers of waste paper and waste plastics poured into Taiwan from 86 countries on five continents. The impact has been mixed as domestic recycling prices have crashed several times, though factories specializing in recycled material have more sources of goods. This shows that Taiwan is indeed feeling the effect of the China-U.S. garbage war. Most of the villagers in Kampong Baru Darak in Sabah are stateless. Local Ziji volunteers visited during the movement restriction order to provide aid supplies to solve a food shortage problem. They also led villagers to do recycling to promote the importance of environmental protection. Stepping on the PET bottles with bare foods and putting them into the bag, this group of little ambassadors of environmental protection are stateless children. 
The man in black is teacher Vincent, who brings the children to collect recyclables in Kampong Baru du Rock. After getting to know Tsuchi, I found that the garbage I threw away was valuable. There are about 50 families living in Kampong Baru du Rock. Most of them are stateless villages. Before they came across environmental protection, they handled the garbage through incineration. There is a chat group in our school and teacher Vincent is calling everybody in the group to be eco-friendly. No more littering and collecting all resources without burning. If burned, especially for plastic products, odor and toxic gas will be released. We normally collect 10 PET bottles from the store each day. After cleaning the bottles, we can sell them to help the school. The school mentioned by the villagers is a stainless learning center that Chiji is preparing to launch, hoping to provide educational opportunities for the children who cannot go to school. Because they are not educated, they are unable to find a job, so they steal things which damages our society. Therefore, I think we should set up a school. I think since teacher Vincent cannot bear stateless children to step on the wrong path, he will become a member of the stateless learning center. Before school starts, he often motivates parents and children to contribute in recycling station. Now we have learned to be environmentally friendly, so we will tell our friends not to throw these materials, which can be recycled. Through actual hands-on sorting of recyclables, villagers learn to cherish the resources of the earth. The recycling station of the community not only plays a role in recycling, but also a role in education. 82-year-old Zhiji volunteer Tsai Rengui was injured while doing woodwork in his youth, causing damage to his left eye. Although he can only see with his right eye after retirement, he chose to contribute his skills at the Wuchi Recycling Station. Let's take a look. I'm very used to taking the bottle cap off. I'm fast at doing this and no one is faster than me. <laughs> 82-year-old grandfather Tsai is diligent at the task of removing the plastic rings around the bottle cap. But upon a closer look, grandfather Tsai can only see with his right eye. When I was doing woodwork, the sawdust dropped onto the ground and bounced back up injuring my eye. It was a long time ago, around when I was 30. When Tsai Rengui was young, he did woodwork to support his family of 10, but had his left eye injured at his workplace. Now he fully dedicates the Tsuji task as he pulls out the weeds at the Tsuji Sanyi Tea Garden. He does this task faster than others, from the Flower Expo's event coordination to painting walls. His age and eyesight never stopped his passion to help others. He is very good at recycling. I never thought he had an eye problem. One seems to not age while doing recycling, as seen on the 77-year-old volunteer Chen Se. Though she has poor waist and knees, she often participates in recycling. Now she is in a much better state. Doing recycling is good. It's like physical therapy. Now I have a better waist since normally I wouldn't be able to stand properly while talking to you. Wuxi Recycling Station is like home. This blessed place is multifunctional. This building is built by the prefabricated housing from the Great Earthquake of September the 21st, including the interlocking block pavements. Besides doing recycling during the day, there is a book club on Tuesdays. There are also care recipients who attend closes here. The cycle of kindness and the expansion of love under every volunteer has created blessings at this place. It's 21 years since the 921 earthquake occurred. In the following days, we'll take a look at how compassion and love after the disaster has continued to this day. We take a look at community spaces which have been abandoned but recently turned into a parent-child centers and a workshop for the disabled. Taiwan's 91 earthquake has severely impacted Taichung's Dongxi district. In the aftermath, disaster relief homes were built for the residents to live in. In the past 29 years, some people have moved out of the relief housing, and the empty space was thus turned into a crafting workshop for people who are disabled. Inside the workshop, everyone is busy working on their own crafts. 21-year-old Yo Long hasn't been long at the workshop, but he is already very familiar with how to sew the skirts onto the dolls. I feel like there's room for improvement. If I can make them better, then the items will sell well, and I can buy things that I want. This workshop is a place to help disabled people to learn to be independent and other skills after they graduate from school.
Most of the time after graduation, the kids end up just staying at home the entire day, or they are out wandering without anything to do. So by providing them with a program like this, they can discover their own talents and abilities. As this was originally a disaster relief home, it needed some updates to turn the space into a workshop. The home has been empty for quite some time, so after their initial cleanup, it was hand over to us. We are using this space for people with disabilities, so we remodeled it more to fit their needs. The bath was turned into a barrier-free bathroom, where the door is a sliding door to increase access. The switch is lighted to serve as a reminder of when someone is in use, all for the purpose of serving the disabled students who come here. It's a great space for the older students to learn in safety and comfort. They can gain a new perspective in life. The Dongshi workshop also has a garden. With donated land, the students work on the garden together. I'm in charge of fertilizing and also ripping the land. We work on it together and it goes by pretty quickly. It feels good to work together. Fulfillment and happiness is felt when the students talk about their time at the workshop. A similar disaster relief housing was built in Shigan District's Xinshi community. The building that was originally reserved for the community center has been turned into a parent and child center. We hope those in remote areas can still have resources for the children, like this parent child center where the children can learn and play. Just so happens this place was free. Before the establishment of the center at the end of last year, this space was frequented by drug users. When we first came, there were a lot of overgrown weeds that need to be taken care of. The interior was also redone, and when it was grand opened, the center helped bring some liveliness to the area. Outside the center, a small garden was organized, and what once was a place where people avoided is now filled with the sounds of laughter and joy of kids. So no matter if the relief home is being used as a workshop for disabled people or as a parent and child center, reusing the space brings life back into the building as well as the community. Taichung Jingsa Hall held a charity activity with designer Lin Tenny, donating more than 2,000 pieces of clothing, which were sold at a 20% discount. We leave you with these images. Goodbye.